Hey, it's a really long, complicated story, but I grew up in Melbourne. Diciamo okay. Professor Eleanor, tell Professor. me something about your background story because you're teaching here in Udine since 30 years, no? I've been teaching in Udine since 1990, yeah, 1991. 91. I, I don't remember the exact date, but 1991, I think, yeah. So before, basically, where were you from? So why, when you arrived here? Ah, oh, okay. Well, before I was in Udine, I lived in Spain. Spain. Hmm. I was teaching in Madrid. But I was born in Australia. Mm -hmm. So, hey, it's a really long, complicated story. But I grew up in Melbourne. Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. And I grew up in an area of Melbourne where there were lots of people from different countries because where I lived, there was a migrant hostel, which is where all the immigrants went to live when they first arrived mm -hmm. it's like it was like an old caserma what they have here oh, okay so there was this area where the government gave housing to people from different countries okay. and I grew up in that area of Melbourne so Australia you have to imagine that Australia is a country that had a lot of people coming from different countries from after World War two during the 1960s, a lot of Italians and Greeks, mm -hmm. Turkish people. I don't know like which group came in what period. For sure Italians, 1960. A lot of Italians were coming to Australia because the government was paying mm -hmm. people to come to Australia. English people came as well, Scottish, people from the what is now the United Kingdom, like England, Scotland, Ireland, a lot of people. They were given 10 pounds mm. per person to immigrate. So they didn't pay for the fare and mm. they didn't pay for their housing for the first years. First years. But they were given 10 pounds per person. Mm. So I had to, when you arrived here in Italy, in Udine, in which son, 91? Yeah, okay. So I'll go back to my story. So mm. people were paid. So Australia had a lot of people living there. So I grew up in a very multicultural area, right? Okay. So I was really curious about other languages and other people. Mm -hmm. And I studied languages in my undergraduate degree and linguistics and anthropology. And then I worked, I taught English also to asylum seekers and refugees as well. So I grew up in an area where there were lots of different people. My best friend at school was Italian, so okay. I wanted to study Italian. They didn't have Italian at my university, but they did have a Spanish department, so I studied Spanish and Indonesian. And Indonesian, where you studied, uh, also you teach Spanish or you only I speak studied? Spanish, but I don't, I don't teach it. No, I only teach English. So when so, you arrived here in Italy, you started immediately teaching English or after a few Oh, okay. Yes, I did start teaching English more or less straight away. So, mm -hmm. but I had this great curiosity between, between growing up and my studies, then I traveled. I went to India, I, went, I traveled. This is normal. So I had this mm -hmm. curiosity about the world, okay. about different culture. Okay. So yeah, there's a long story of many travels before I got to Italy, but mm -hmm. I went to teach in Spain and I, I lived in England and Ireland and Scotland. So I actually had quite a lot of experience teaching English in England and in Portugal and Spain mm -hmm. before I came to Italy. Do you understand? So then I got okay. to Italy. I didn't get to Italy until 1990. 1990. Yeah, but I'd actually been living in other countries before then. Yeah, so I came in 1990. I came to Italy, and I was living in Milan. Milan. Yep. So, what makes you do bring here in Italy while you were already living and teaching in different countries? Why did you choose only Italy? Well, the, uh, did I choose Italy? My mother knew that I wanted to come to Italy. My best friend at school was Italian. Okay. So I had a great curiosity about Italy, but mm -hmm. I hadn't lived in Italy and I didn't want to 
I didn't want a holiday in Italy. I mm -hmm. wanted to see if I could live in a country mm -hmm. where I didn't speak the language. But I really wanted, I really had wanted to come mm -hmm. to Italy since I was a very young girl. Very young girl. So that's what brought me here. What made me stay, huh? It's mm. a long story, but I think by the time I was 30, I, I met somebody and I got married and I had children. So I, mm -hmm. I stayed for that reason. You married here in Italy with Italian? Yeah. Ok, ok. So, quindi, quando sei arrivata in Italia, quanti mesi dopo, quanti anni dopo hai imparato l'italiano? Ah. O quando, quanto hai preso difficoltà? Do you want me to speak Italian or English now? Certo che in italiano. Ah, allora. <laughs> quando sono arrivata, parlavo uh -huh. spagnolo. Però non parlavo italiano. Quindi, ho promesso. Mm. Io avevo trovato un lavoro a una scuola a Milano mm -hmm. e lei diceva ma come puoi insegnare se non parli italiano? E mm -hmm. io le ho detto, io imparerò italiano subito. Perché parlava spagnolo? Perché parlava spagnolo. È eh, chiaro che parla spagnolo. È es... <ride> abbastanza... Abbastante. Sì, sì, abbastanza... Devo stare anche a parlare spagnolo. So, quindi ho iniziato a imparare italiano. Mm -hmm. E, e ho trovato lavoro all'università. Ok. Perché pre, no, pre, allora, lavoravo a Milano. Mm -hmm. Però avevo amici a Udine. Oh, you no, naughty bird, go Pigeon. away. Pigeon. I got the... <laughs> ok. Quindi, <laughs> hai, quanti anni hai vissuto in Milano? Ah, nove mesi massimo. Poco. Sì, poco, sì. Dopo hai trasferito a Udine? Allora, in, innanzi, all'inizio facevo pendolare perché avevo un lavoro part time qua mm -hmm. e un lavoro là. Ok. Quindi facevo tipo qua lunedì, martedì, mercoledì qua mm -hmm. e giovedì e venerdì a Milano. Oh. O, o, o qualcosa del genere, cambiavo sempre orario, quindi dovevo sempre fare il pendolare, sai il pendolare? Avevo un biglietto stranissimo che si mm. chiama biglietto chilometrico. Chilometrico? In quegli anni, in anni 90, anni 80, c'era un biglietto che tu non pagavi il biglietto, pagavi i chilometri, era stranissimo, quindi... Mm. Compravi questo biglietto e potevi fare tipo, non lo so, tipo 500 km, andavi a... Okay. Ah, non, non ricordo come funzionava, ma ricordo che avevo questo biglietto strano, che sbagliavo sempre, non bisogna obliterare, non capivo obliterare, non intendeva obliterare, mm. e poi avevo una multa. Oh, Quindi fine. avevo sempre un casino, poi... Viaggiavo con il biglietto, mm -hmm. ma ti serviva. Oh. Se tu prendevi un treno mm. interregionale, un tipo fast train. Fast train, fast train. You had to pay a supplemento rapido, and I okay. didn't know about the supplemento rapido multa. <laughs> so I always had multe, multe. You always had a fine, fine. Always fines. had fines. So it was, yeah, it was really hard. And I remember thinking, these bastards, you know, mm -hmm. like I, every time there was something wrong with my ticket, but I didn't know the rules. Okay. I didn't know that the biglietto kilometrico wasn't just for traveling. But it now. It was, you had to have a supplemento. But now that kind of biglietto kilometrico non exist. Well, anymore. I haven't caught a train very often for the last mm -hmm. years and if I catch a train it might be to go to Venice to the Biennale. La Biennale di Venezia. Yeah, la mm -hmm. Biennale di Venezia. But mm -hmm. I, I really I don't know if the I think the system's completely changed now. No it's changed. There's a lady who worked in the station in those years. So this is 30 years ago. The station where? In the station in Udine. Mm -hmm. There was Stefano and Rosanna and they were really helpful because I was always upset about this <laughs> multa. <laughs> So I would go to them and say, Spiegatemi! 
spiegato. Cosa, per, perché la multa di nuovo? Mm. Difficult situation in the and they helped me a lot because they, I really didn't understand why I always got a fine when I had a ticket. So mm-hmm. for me, I wasn't doing anything illegal, but I didn't understand. You didn't understand the rules and regulations. Yeah, and so and then I had what we call, in those years, in those periods, sometimes you, you experience what's called culture shock. You know, we talked about, we started, we didn't talk about it much, but you know, culture shock. Culture shock. Exactly. Everything's new. So on one hand, Mm. You're sitting in the piazza, mm. you're having a cappuccino mm-hmm. and you love this place and everything's exciting and beautiful. But on the other hand, you make mistakes but you don't understand why and you get like like in the fine. multa, the multa, fine, fine, right? Fine. So, so you have culture shock in certain times and it's not fair because not fair. I'm an honest person. So why <laughs> are they giving me a fine? But I had a lot of fines. More mm. money than I earned, you know, sometimes. Oh, so, yeah, it was a much. lot. It was bad the first few months. I only got one fine in the bus. I had a ticket, but I didn't punch and then arrived. You didn't punch. You see, and you yeah. say punch, they say obliterare. Obliterare. Well, so, in Australia or in England, you give the ticket to somebody and they punch on their little things. So, for me, I didn't know I had mm. to, to punch. In Italy, we ourselves have to punch inside the machine. Ah. And then ticket checker check your ticket. Uh, this is in, in Pakistan. No, no, in Italy. In oh, Italy, yeah, but Italy. what about in Pakistan? Somebody in takes Pakistan. the ticket. Some ticket checker check the ticket. Yeah, yeah or when Pakistan. you get on the bus, you give the money and they give you of a course. ticket. And in so they already, they already punch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In bus operation like this, you at the point, you pay and then you go.